Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Great to have you here today, episode 3058. We're gonna be going over how omega-3s, brand new research, lights up the brain, especially as we begin to age. I'm gonna give you the exact milligrams that were found to be most helpful, and I'm also going to go over at what age you want to begin to start taking these. And I believe that after you're done listening to the show, you can understand so much more about how the brain begins to age and what you can do in order to slow it. So this is from a meta-analysis called A Systemic Review in Meta-Analysis of the Omega-3 Fatty Acids Effects on Brain-Derived Neurotropic Factor, called BDNF. So I'm going to go over what BDNF is in just a moment, but I've done a number of shows on BDNF. And it's not just omega-3s that boost BDNF. I actually went over one other specific nutrient that is easy to get that's the number one factor in boosting BDNF. I'm going to link up those shows today at stephencabral.com slash 3058. stephencabral.com slash 3058 for the research, the whole meta-analysis, plus the previous shows on BDNF. All right, for those of you, though, uh, who are not uh, up to speed on what BDNF is, that's okay. It's not one of those words that just rolls off your tongue, right? Brain-derived neurotropic factor. But it's a protein, and it's a protein in the brain that actually helps to improve the nerves and the synapses and the brain tissue or cells itself. So think about this. Every time you are sending a chemical message to open your hand, like I'm doing right now if you're watching this on video, or close your hand, right? What's happening is you are firing off chemicals that are sending electrical signals from synapse to synapse, neuron to neuron, down the spinal cord, and then it comes off and innervates the muscles, organs, or whatever the message is getting sent to. So BDNF actually, it helps supply the growth of these new nerves. So BDNF is a specific protein that's used in this process, and it's part of what is called brain plasticity. As we get older, we start to lose this plasticity, almost think of it as like flexibility of the brain, the brain's ability to create new synapses, new nerves, new memories. And one of the issues is as the brain and nervous system begins to falter, things like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, a lot of these things that we think of like, oh, it's just inevitable as you get older. It's not. It is not inevitable whatsoever. We already know how to detect them 10 to 20 years in advance, and we know the protocols in order to halt and or reverse these diseases of the body. So really important that you know that. I've previous podcasts as well, of course, on Alzheimer's and a whole category of podcast just on the brain. You can find those as well at stephencabral.com slash podcast. All right. So let's go over um, BDNF itself is also used in improving cognition, mood, uh, glucose metabolism, protecting the muscles, and improving overall organ function, especially like the pancreas itself. BDNF also improves cardiac muscle contractions and helps with nitric oxide. And especially as we're getting older, we need that nitric oxide for good, healthy blood pressure, elasticity of our arteries. I talked about that just on last week's shows as well. That elasticity improves our overall cardiovascular age, which enables us to feel younger act younger, have more energy. And so what this meta-analysis actually did was looked at, does do omega-3 fatty acids have an effect on brain-derived neurotropic factor? Because if you can keep producing BDNF as you get older, well, then you're not going to have to deal with as many of these age-related brain and cardiovascular-based issues. And remember, just to kind of refresh, the top five causes of death and really the, really the only five main causes of death, cardiovascular, type 2 diabetes, blood pressure and stroke, cancer, and Alzheimer's dementia. Okay, so if brain-derived neurotropic factor basically helps with almost all of those because it helps with oxidative stress, um, we know that this is something that we need to keep going for our life. All right, so basically the studies, it looked at 23 studies total. And 11 met the eligibility for criteria to be able to be included in this meta-analysis. And here's what it looked at. So omega-3 fatty acids, basically omega-3s come from uh, typically a fatty fish. So tuna, salmon, um, mackerel, anchovies, wild trout, 
Uh, all of those are great. Tuna we want to be careful with because it's higher levels of mercury. That's that's kind of one of the drawbacks of tuna. So we typically recommend sardines, mackerel, anchovies, wild salmon, wild trout uh, as great sources for omega-3s. Or, of course, omega-3 supplementation. These studies looked at omega-3 supplementation. All right. So the studies range from anywhere between two months and six months. There were about 700 total participants, 698 total. And the uh, mean ages were between 12 and 65 years old. The, the omega-3 dosages were around 600 milligrams to 4,800 milligrams. Their participants' health status, six studies were based on cognitive or behavioral-based issues, two studies on diabetes, one study on cardiovascular, and two studies on healthy or overweight individuals. I want to share with you why this is important. These were not necessarily, overall, these were not healthy individuals. They had cognitive issues, behavioral issues, blood sugar issues, heart cardiovascular issues, or they were overweight, right? So when we look at this, we're not looking at like healthy population. We're saying these people overall weren't doing well in the first place. What happens if we just add omega-3s, just supplement with omega-3s? Does, does that help supersede almost everything else that's going wrong? The answer was yes. Looking at the pooled data, omega-3 fatty acid supplementation significantly increased brain-derived neurotropic factor levels. And here was the analysis. So significant, meaning like the results. So results could be, well, results could be negative, right? So you have that. Results could be insignificant, like no real clinical difference between that and the placebo, or significant, meaning like there is a marked difference when someone was taking omega-3s. And that's what they found. Here's the interesting thing that people and studies that lasted uh, longer than 10 weeks got better results. So this is something we talk about in our practice. You need, to get, you need to give things 12 weeks. And here's why. Even in Ayurvedic medicine, they've talked about this. The body begins to turn over. At, and I know different cells in the body turn over at different rates. I get that. I understand. But when we're especially even just looking at our cell membranes, like they turn over every 90 to 120 days. You've got to give it that 12 weeks. That's 84 days, right? So when we look at this, omega-3s begin to work even better the longer they're taken. So that's one. The next one was this. I found this to be fascinating. Somewhere around 1,500 milligrams was and seemed to be the best dose. And you want to start before the age of 50 years old. It's not that you can't get benefit at 65 years old, but ideally you want to start to use these earlier in life. So, this also falls in line with what we've been doing in our clinical practice for a long time. Even back in the uh, early 2000s, so we were recommending omegas, but there were people recommending a gram per percentage of body fat, which I found to be outlandish back then, especially since it can act as a blood thinner. Um, and it's just a, it's such a huge dosage of anything. So, I'm not a big mega dosage individual. But for most people, I do recommend two to three grams. And in our practice, we've always recommended two grams. The reason why I've recommended three grams for some people is because some people are on a very high meat diet. And so for them, when I run their omega-6 to omega-3 levels, we actually just need more to balance the amount of omega-6s they're taking in. So it's everything's bio-individual, but for your average individual, we've always done 2,000 milligrams, which is like very, it's obviously almost the same as 1,500 milligrams, 500 milligrams more. It's not a whole lot more. In the study, they went up to almost five grams. Uh, I don't have a real huge issue with that, but I've never really had to do more than 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams, two to three grams, uh, in order to get clinical results. So here's how you can figure this out for yourself as well. You can actually run the omega-6 to omega-3 inflammation test. It will share with you, this is what your current diet is supplying you for an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. And then you can supplement based on exactly what you need. And if you don't want to run the lab, that's okay. But I definitely do recommend taking two soft gels per day of the daily omega-3 supports, either the soft gels or the liquid. The liquid would be one teaspoon in order to get the same clinical results that these 11 studies showed. I can't recommend enough. I really can't. You just need to make sure that you're getting a good quality fish oil, one that is non-oxidized, one that comes from wild-caught uh, or sustainable-based fish, one that's been tested that's triglyceride bound. You just need good non-oxidized fish oil. The fish oil out there that's bad for you is the same stuff that you can buy. I always say like, don't buy your supplements where you buy your toilet paper. If you're going to CVS or you're going to Costco to buy your supplements, it's just it's just the cheapest 
products out there, right? And they're cheap for a reason. They're not good quality. So you're getting oxidized based fish oil and you don't want that. So this is uh, this is a study that I feel really passionate about because omega-3s do work. There's so many people out there who just, they're just following words that other people have said and they're not looking at the clinical data. The clinical data is in. It improves your cardiovascular, it improves, improves your blood pressure, it improves diabetes, it improves brain health, literally improves every main cause of death and mortality. So find a good omega-3, good quality, take about two grams per day, higher in EPA than DHA. You want about a two to two and a half ratio of higher EPA than DHA, and you're going to be off to the races. If you want to run your own levels, actually see for yourself where you're at, head on over to stephencabral.com slash shop. Just type in omega-6, omega-3 test or inflammation test. You'll find it. And if you want the daily omega-3 support that we use, just type in daily omega-3 support at stephencabral.com slash shop. That'll take you right over to Equal Life. Hopefully this was helpful, everybody. I appreciate it. If you want to check out the study, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 3058. And of course, share the show with anyone you believe could serve. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.